Quadraphonics. So I only had it three or three of them go in because I've looked for myself and I kept pressing uh, <laughs> the play button. So there we go. So, all's fair and never more. Right, so uh, we'll be chatting in a moment to the fabulous pieces of mind to take us up to it. Let's go to Into the Light. <laughs>
pieces of mind and on the line should be John Taxi. Hello, John. Hello, Chris. Yes. Long time no speak. It is. Well, I looked at it. It's um, 11 years. Yeah, October 2013. Yeah, we've done a session long in a, a galaxy far, far away. And they said there was about uh, 10 of you. It was like a rotating cast of drummers yeah. and things, like the specials. <laughs> I know. We're, we're down to eight now for our last gig. Um, we coaxed, I coaxed one of them out of retirement, Andy. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had enough. We're too old for this lot, I think. Oh, you, you haven't done much for a while, have you, I wouldn't have thought? Um, we did three... Uh, we were going to do our last, um, we called it Last Fling, last uh, year, 2023. Um, we just played three gigs. We did a, a charity one for Valindra at Ebervale. Um, then the Potters in Newport. We'd never played there back in the uh, 60s. I don't even know if it was open back then. Um, and then finally the Earl Egg. Oh, yeah. Funny uh, enough. Well, it, yeah, the dig. Day before the first of April, I think it was. The band they interviewed in the first hour of playing the early, they got Bobby Martin from Frank Zappa's band they played the so it's all uh, come together tidy. Yeah, I listened to that. Yeah. yeah. So um like us see, um tell us a little bit of uh, part of the history of the pieces of mind because um you've supported like I played the Applejacks and the Kings in, the, in just before you you supported both yeah, of those bands. I, I heard the Applejacks. Uh, we yeah we supported. Ah, the who? Sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, for those that don't know the band, um, we started in 1963, and like many groups as they were called back then, we were playing instrumental shadow stuff. Um, and things like Wipeout, you know, from the yeah. uh, did the ventures, or ventures, yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Um, and then I was working at Whiteheads, and uh, there was a good-looking bloke that worked in sales there. So I said, "Do you fancy coming to sing for us?" I didn't even know if he he could sing. And um, this is Adrian. Um, so he came along to uh, the Bosco Hall where we used to practice, and we sort of uh, auditioned him as such. Whilst he wasn't superb for his very first audition, I could see all the girls in the audience, because it was a sort of youth club back then. They were all looking at him, and I thought, he's the bloke for us. And he's been with us ever since. In fact, um, even though um, myself and Percy were the original people starting it, Adrian is the longest serving member, because I, I packed in in um, 1967 to get married and they wanted to go to germany and i thought well, this is unfair the others were all single lads they don't want to marry bloke with them so they went off to germany and played germany and france enough where um one of the other people joined us um the only non-welshman um vic was actually a cockney so he's on re welsh as far as we're concerned <laughs> so he's still playing in the band now oh, so um as you said we we supported quite a few, courtesy of um, Morris White, or Mo White, as we call him. He was the manager of a music shop in um, Newport, and he seemed to like us. Um, he got us to support numerous bands. Um, I'll only name a, a few. Johnny Kidd, The Who, um, Billy Fury, and the Applejacks. But there were loads of others as well listed on, the, um, on our website. As for Marty Wild, I believe you got him on next week. He's on um, Tuesday, he, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we were supposed to uh, back him in Caldicott, um, but there's some doubt whether he turned up because a band called the Coronets were there. Um, Andy, um, he thinks he didn't turn up or he, he couldn't make it for some reason. I'm not sure, to be honest. I can't remember. Um, so it would be nice if... <laughs> Marty could remember it yeah, and uh, confirm one way or the other. Because yeah. it's his 85th birthday to us. So, oh, so you know, yes. it, and funny enough, he's not coming to Albuquerque, which is probably his biggest song in Wales. All oh, right. But we have a chat yeah. with him anyway. So, um, of course, when did you... You've got an album out now called uh, Born at the Bosco. When was that yeah. recorded? Because that's obviously um, a lot, lot later than the, the days of supporting The Who, etc. Yeah. Well, after we had the session with yourselves... Um, Adrian had some time in London, uh, this was in 2013, and he met up with um, one of his old friends, 
James Bradfield from uh, Manic Street oh, Preachers. Yeah, yeah. And we had spoke, myself and Adrian, about uh, potentially recording some stuff. So James said, well, why don't you record it in our studio? It was then in uh, Fa- in Cardiff, Faster Studios. Yeah, they go in Newport as well, don't they? Yeah, well, the, the uh, Faster Studios is closed. Um, so they moved to the one in New. Well, I think it's up near Killian. Yeah. But anyway, um, he said, uh, you know, you can use the studio as long as you just use it between three or four days in March because they were start, starting the tour and I think they were um, rehearsing. I think they were rehearsing at Rockfield. Yeah. So the studio was empty. So. He loaned us the studio, and he also got Dave Erringer, who had just finished work on Roger Daltrey and Wilco Johnson going back home. Oh, that's um, a good album, that, yeah. Yeah, and apparently Dave Erringer, he said, oh, I love working with old men. Can I, can I come and do the uh, pieces? So he came along and did that, and he was a superb engineer. So we spent three days in there and did nine tracks. We would have liked to do all originals, but as you see on the album, we did four originals and five um, covers. We didn't really have time because we only had a, essentially a couple of months to uh, practice before we went into the studio. And we also, sadly, um, one of the band passed away. Um, Phil, the drummer, who was uh, at your session. Yeah, yeah. Um, he passed away in uh, February, just before we were going to start rehearsing for the uh, band. So that set us back a little bit. So we did all that, and then um, the album was released, uh, I think it was towards the end of 2014. And it's still on Amazon and Spotify and all those other digital outlets. Indeed, and yeah. we've not, not made a penny out of it. <laughs> no, nobody ever does, of course. No. And, but of course, I did play... Um, sort of the Into the Light, which is quite uh, sort of a, a, a melancholy track, but you're more known for your, your, your upbeat R&B uh, style, isn't you? Yeah. That that track was written by Adrian, um, and it didn't have all the band playing on it. It was, um, it was just me, Adrian, and um, Andy playing acoustics. A- Adrian didn't normally pay, play guitar in the uh, band, but he was playing acoustic in the... Uh, if you're listening to on stereo, he's in the centre or both sides. I'm on the right speaker doing all the twiddles, and Andy's playing rhythm on the left, and obviously Rick playing sax. Yeah, sax yeah. So there was only uh, four of us playing on it. Um, but as you say, we are no more for the um, more upbeat, the old what we used to call old-fashioned R&B, not the um, the modern stuff R&B. Yeah. But like the, uh, well, I think the Wilco Johnson started to play in some of the stuff later that we played. You know. uh, funny enough, I interviewed um, uh, uh, Nine Below Zero about a month ago. And, right. and of course, we said we were talking with the R&B then, because of course, the Who posted Maximum R&B. And R&B now is basically dance music, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to rubbish him, but it's not my type it's of not, It's not what we, we, we expected, is it? Yeah. So has, has Adrian still got the jacket? This is a question I want to know. Uh, how did he acquire <laughs> it? I know how he acquired it, but uh, can you uh, tell him? No, it, it's, um, apparently it disappeared in Hamburg. Um, so we had the jacket for a long time. Um, this was from when we played with a certain band in 1966. But it, it wasn't the... Uh, Union Jack one, no. it was the Czech one, which I think um, John used to wear. Yeah. More than Pete. There's a photograph on, on your site of it, of uh, Adrian yeah, in the jacket, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think that was in, um, it was after I left the band in 67 when they played at the Kensington Club yeah. in Newport. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But somebody pinched it in Hamburg. Um, because, you, well, you're probably aware of what the bands are going to do in Hamburg. Yeah, they yeah. play a couple of hours on, a couple of hours off, and they're playing all all through the night, and they usually end up sleeping in the place as well. So probably one of the ladies uh, pinched it. Yeah, well, yeah. it's karma, shall we say, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's reputed to be a pair of um, boots that pirates used to wear with one member. I don't know if he's still got it. 
<laughs> and of course, I remember another story. We can't really go into that, but uh, no, you'd have we won't to, mention, you'd we have, won't mention waste baskets. You left a present in a waste basket in Brimout Comp, and I'm, I can be, almost see Brimout Comp from where I'm sat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so uh, the, tell me about this gig that's going to be happening then in, I, I didn't realise there any bands in the potters in Newport Beach. So I have passed it years ago when I used to be on a white TS scheme a long time ago. And it, it's the pub just by the bus station, isn't it? Yes, that's it. It's, it's a bit awkward place to, you know, for bands to get to. But they have lots of music nights. And it's a bit deceiving the pub because they can get a hell of a lot in there. Um, normally, I believe they have bands on um, Fridays, Saturdays. I'm not certain about Thursdays as well. But occasionally, um, they have band on the Sunday. Um, we were talking to Alan Jones from Amen Corner oh, um, last year. In, in fact, it might have been 2022. And he said, well, do you fancy playing in the Potters? So he sort of promoted it for us. <coughs> um, when I got in there, I couldn't believe how packed it was. And it was all the old sort of people who used to come to uh, see us back in the 60s, obviously a little bit older. Yeah. Most of us couldn't recognise each other. And I was chatting to one bloke, thinking he was my cousin, who I hadn't seen for about 15 years. And it wasn't. <laughs> it was someone else. <laughs> but never mind. Um, so we had such a good time after the one last year. Adrian, uh, he, he sort of calls me every now and then, and he said he fancied playing again. And I said, well, so do I, as <laughs> such, you know. So I checked with um, the band, and most of the band said who played then, and came back and said, yeah, we'll give it one more go. And I contacted Andy, who had actually retired, I think, in 2017, because he had had enough. Because mm -hmm. um, he also um, does a lot of recording with uh, a band called Times Up. They don't gig, they just uh, release albums. So um, I coached him to come back and he said, well, I'll come and play as long as it's just one more. So on the 28th of uh, April this year, we're going back to the Potters. Yes. Um, the tickets are the same price as last year, so we haven't increased them at all. Um, it's £5.00. Um, there's a link on the Eventbrite, which I believe you pay a little booking fee on there as well. So it's between five and six pound on there, or you can get them through the potters themselves. And it should be, I would imagine, as is the last one, it's going to be highly sought after the, the, that yes, tactic. Yeah, I think they're going quite strong at the moment. So, you know, if you want, people want tickets, get in now. Because so as it gets closer, they'll go. I, I couldn't have uh, sort of written this really because Alan is promoting the one in the, I mean, it was in the first hour and he's doing this one and I say I, I work with Alan for many years over the over, back in the day. Yeah, well, I, I, like many of the uh, people in some of those bands, we knew them back in the 60s. Adrian, uh, you know, knew Andy Fairweather low quite a lot. Uh, I think I bumped into him once when we uh, crossed each other playing some, you know, gigs close mm. to each other. I think it might have been in the Set Maniacs ra rather than Amen Corner. But I've known Alan since the early of the mid sixties. Oh yeah, he is a character he got some fantastic stories. <laughs> yeah. So hey. Uh, John has been brilliant to chat to you after all these years. Hopefully I, I can come and see you down in, in Newport. Uh, yeah. But like I say, I, I, I'm not allowed to drive at the moment, so uh, if I can get a lift, I shall definitely come and see you. Yeah, but so, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to drive because I'm having cataract surgery in two weeks' time, but hopefully by the end of April it'll be okay. Yeah, because you, obviously you, you're not in Wales anymore. Are you? You live no, in I, I live in North Ants, and Vic lives in... Um, Bromford and Adrian lives in Spain, so That's he's right. got the furthest to come. Because I remember when you done the session for me, they, they was coming, you come from all over the the globe, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one uh, odd thing as well, uh, on the uh, the Potters, there'll be five out of the original six that were on a 1964 publicity picture. Yeah. All six of us are still alive. Five are still playing in the band. That's myself. Um, Andy, Adrian, Steve, and Percy. Um, Will lives in Australia, so it's a bit far for him to come. <laughs> but with the, in these days of uh, Photoshop, etc., you get him to take a photograph and you can uh, 
stick him on me as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, if you can just a piece of the mind, of course, I I, I, I haven't called you the pieces of eight this time. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've drummed it into myself, I don't, I don't call them the pieces of eight. The pieces of mind, of course, <laughs> legendary band in Newport and having uh, the final gig in the Potters in, on, in what was it, April 11th, was it? No, no, 28th of April. 28th of April, yeah. Yeah, Sunday night. And uh, if you want to check out what you can... Be, listen to first go to the, your Spotify and all your usual places and the album is Born at the Bosco what's the thinking behind the title then? Well it's um, when we did the album uh, as most bands do they, you, we had a little session of going through and cu- coming up with titles and then choosing one because at that time we had nine of us um, I decided because I'm sort of <laughs> leader as such I decided it was just three of us so we'll decide on the title that was myself Andy and Adrian and we have a list of about 20 we whittled it down to five I forget who came up with um, Bone at the Bosco I, I think I might have said Bone in the Bosco initially and then Adrian said it sounds better Bone at the Bosco mm. so that's Bosco Hall on Cromwell Road, Newport. It's where we effectively started. That was my next question. <laughs> yeah, it was in Bosco. 1963. It's the church there, and there was, there's a sort of church hall behind it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we played in there. We did um, a gig back in 2015, and it looked as if it hadn't changed since we played there in the 60s. But it probably has. Yeah. You know, memories, our memories are so addled yeah. these days. <laughs> You can't remember exactly what they were. No, I can't remember what I had for breakfast or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> they, wait, Dexy has been brilliant chat. You Hopefully I'll chat to you uh, down there in, uh, in the potters. Uh, do you want to introduce I Wish You Would for me and then I should yeah. let you go? Because I know you, yeah. your wife got your tea ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she hasn't rung up yet, so <laughs> might like to smell it cooking. Um, yeah, Wish You Would. We've been playing this track since the 60s. And um, since we reformed in 2013, we always start with it. Um, it's quite short. It's just um, effectively a single chord, um, although there's another one where it goes down. It goes from G to F, those people that know chords. And stuff. But the main uh, music is uh, solely on a single chord. And then I play mouth organ and our manica on it as well. So it's Wish You Would. An old blues track. Thank you.
at the Bosco, get yourself down to your potters in Newport and see the final gig of the pieces of mine. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. And you check them out on on all your YouTube stuff. It's, it's like watching the specials. There's about 20 of them on stage at times. Brilliant stuff. Looking forward to that. And thanks to Dexy from the chat.